Then in a separate hearing today, a confrontation between Teamsters boss Sean O'Brien and Oklahoma Senator and MMA fighter, former MMA fighter, uh, Mark Wayne Mullins, it nearly came to blows. The TIFF was over a post that O'Brien had made on X directed toward Senator Mullins saying, quote, you know where to find me, any place, any time, cowboy, hashtag little man syndrome. And I think it's safe to say the senator took exception to that. In fact, you tweeted at me one, two, three, four, five times. And let me read what the last one said. Quit the tough guy act in these Senate hearings. You know where to find me, any place, any time, cowboy. Sir, this is a time, this is a place. If you want to run your mouth, we can be two consenting adults. We can finish it here. Okay, that's fine. Perfect. You want to do it now? I'd love to do it right now. Well, stand your butt up then. You stand your butt up. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh, stop it. Is that your All solution right. every problem? Oh, no, no, sit down. Oh, Eric, sit down. Look at you. You know, you're a United States senator. Let's bring in the man you just saw in that clip, Oklahoma Senator and former MMA fighter Mark Wayne Mullen. Mark Wayne, good to see you. Thanks for joining us on the program. What's up, Sean? Um, listen, O'Brien, he's, he's doughy, he's arrogant, but most of all, he's disrespectful. Uh, I mean, it's okay to have a conversation in the U.S. Senate, but the things he's tweeted at you are absolutely right. outrageous. Talk to us about what happened there. Well, he's a thug, and he's been coming after me ever since him and I had an exchange back in uh, back in the summer. And keep in mind, uh, this guy was exp was expelled from his own union for harassing his own members. Um, he has uh, been multiple run-ins with the, with the police. In 2017, President uh, Hoffa of the uh, Teamsters at that point had to remove him from negotiations for his behavior. And in 2022, the guy came out and and said he wanted to bring the mob mentality back to the Teamsters. Well. If you're going to bring that back, I guess you've got to have this tough guy act, and that's what he thought he was going to do with me. The problem is, is that's not how we behave in Oklahoma. You know, some people say, is this behavior incumbent to a Senate, uh, to a senator? I, I don't know, but I will tell you this for sure. Um, that's not how we behave in Oklahoma, and I'm Oklahoman first. And so if you're going to run your mouth, you're going to be called out on it, and that's what happened here. How did you think it was going to go? And Is there anything, Senator, that we did not see on camera? Yeah, the fear in his eyes when I stood up. He, 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 was, he was scared out of his mind uh, because he was very thankful that Bernie Sanders stopped us. After he said, okay, we can do it now, I thought, great, this is going to be a great day. I mean, no offense, but I really wasn't worried about the fight itself, uh, but I was ready to shut his mouth up. This guy, you can't continue to do this stuff. Too many times people, um, they, they get real tough on a keyboard because of social media, but when they get called on it, they actually may learn lessons. So maybe he learned a lesson because afterwards he was backpedaling saying, hey, listen, this is what I'm mad. I, let's go get a cup of coffee. Fine, if you want to have a cup of coffee. I fought a lot of guys in the cage and, and, uh, and competed a lot of times on the mat in jiu-jitsu and wrestling, and I'm good friends with them afterwards. We can shake hands and move on. We may be able to put this to bed, but I guarantee it won't run his mouth to me again. So I, I've never seen you fight in the cage, Senator, but I have seen you in the gym, uh, and I, if I was betting, it's an easy bet to make uh, on, on who would uh, come out the victor in that confrontation. But what troubles me is uh, O'Brien is so disrespectful, especially to you. I, I wonder yeah. why... Bernie Sanders keeps inviting him back to testify on the Hill when he has no respect for you means no respect for the institution itself. Right. Well, and I brought that up to Bernie because Bernie was saying this isn't how we behave. And I says, you brought the thug in. You know how he behaved. You've seen this te his, his tweets to me or X, I don't know what you call them, but where he's, he's tweeted at me. And, and you've seen where, uh, where he's behaved and you know his past. You're the one bringing this thug in in front of the committee. So what do you expect is going to happen? And keep in mind, too, this isn't anything new. Andrew Jackson uh, challenged two people or nine people to a duel when he was president. And he also knocked one guy out at a, at a White House dinner. There's been Caney's before in the in the Senate too. Maybe we should bring some of that back and it'll keep people from thinking they're so tough and make a set at a table and we can actually work out our differences without poking at each other and, and, and want to run to cameras and call people names. Maybe if we, if we have some type of respect because we know there's going to be consequences for your actions, then maybe we can move on with all this, I don't know, jargon that happens around this place. Well, the very... What the hearing was called standing up against corporate greed, how unions yeah. are improving the lives of working families. Just the idea to have to sit there, Senator, as a Republican and discuss <clears throat> that myth, that'd make me mad.
to start well, with. It is a myth, Dagan, too, because if you look at it, statistically in right-to-work states, the average salary for the person is $4,000 higher than unions, uh, than union salaries. If you go back to 50 years ago, 33% of the workforce was represented by unions. Today, it's 10.1%. It's Obviously, the unions aren't working, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong against unions. If you want to be a, in a union, great, go do it. But it's not as, absolutely needed. They shouldn't force people to do it. And this this thug, Brian, uh, 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 O'Brien, that's what his deal is. He wants to he wants to go out there and bully people into becoming a union member and saying he's for all workers. You don't represent my employees, and you sure the heck don't represent the attitude of Oklahomans. Well, as an Oklahoman and as a, and as a man, it's uh, it's pretty tough for Bernie Sanders to think that you're going to sit there and take the Twitter abuse and also the yeah. abuse in the in the hearing and not stand up and push back on it. But Senator, I want to I want to move to this because President Biden is in San Francisco this week for the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. We was expected to meet and talk with Chinese President Xi Jinping. You've called on the Biden administration to get a tougher stance on China. What do you expect to come from these meetings? Anything good for the U.S., good for China? How do you play it out? If Trump was the one negotiating, I'd be very positive about it. The fact that uh, that Biden is the one doing it, I, I'm very concerned. It, it, Biden's administration, uh, through his leadership, thinks that appeasement is the way that you deal with, with dictators. That's not what they respect. They re respect peace through strength. We already know China's plan. Dictators are really good about showing their hand, showing, telling them what they're going to do. The, Ch the Chinese government has a one belt, one road initiative. That means they want to bring down the United States from being the world leader, and they want all roads to lead to China, and then they're going to put a belt around us and make us all um, behave in the way that Chinese government wants us to behave. That's what the One Belt, One Road initiative is. So we know it, so there is no appeasement to them. We have to have a strong stance and quit being reliant on China. And by the way, if we go to this EV vehicle, over 80% of our batteries today are made in China. And so we're going to be more reliant on China in the future if we continue these the, uh, Biden's policies. We have so much leverage. If at the leadership in the White House had the stones to just say, oh, the, I was about to say it for you, Dave. The, the seventy, the Belt and Road Initiative, seventy-five percent, so three quarters of the loans made under that initiative are in dollars, and they're in distress right. at levels not seen since the '90s Asian financial crisis. And they're going to come crying to the United States needing dollars and needing help from our Treasury when those loans go kaflooey. And that's just one right. thing we could do. Crack down on their banks who are laundering the money, all the, the money uh, used to buy Iranian and Russian oil that's supposed that's to right. be sanctioned. There, there is a strong stance that the Biden administration could do to actually bring in this strong arm that uh, that the Chinese government is doing. I just came back from Djibouti this weekend. Our National Guard, Oklahoma National Guard, has been deployed to uh, Djibouti and Kenya and a few other places around there. And so we spent uh, Veterans Day with them. And uh, that's the first overseas Chinese port that is uh, that's in the world outside of China itself in in uh, in Djibouti. And the reason why they have it is because the shipping lanes. They understand the importance of the shipping. Lanes, but if you see around where they're investing, it's all in port cities where they're trying to get over the commerce of it. They're allowing Iran and Russia to be the strong arm and cause wars. They're trying to go and, and strangle the economy by when time comes to, to control the shipping and the commerce around the world. That's one belt, one road initiative. And we know this. We've got reports on it. People that want to study it can see it. And yet we're doing nothing about it. The, the Biden administration is turning complete blind eye and, as I said, is trying to do a Appeasement. So if it was Trump meeting with uh, President Xi, I would be very excited about it. The fact that it's Biden, it really worries me. I don't think this guy's in a condition to be ne negotiating for anyone, much less the United States of America. Senator, real quick, I, I know Democrats are not going to vocally push back against Joe Biden. They're on the same Democrat team. Uh, but is, is there some softer, lighter pushback, behind the scenes pushback that Democrat yeah. senators are giving to Joe Biden to go, listen, you got to be tough, you got to be strong, you got to fight for America, or are they on the Joe Biden side of appeasement of China? 
You know, when it comes to policy, I think the, the Democrats lean to be more on the appeasement side for the most part, except those that are in um, Senate Armed Services. I think if you look at the Democrats in Senate Armed Services that I work with all the time, uh, they understand the real threat because maybe they're read in on a higher um, a clearance level. And so we get to see it, we get briefed on it. So I think most of us would say they need to take a stronger, stronger stance on it. But for the most part, the Democrat Party them, th themselves support the policies that the Biden administration their president is doing. Senator Mark Wayne Mullen, great to see you. Megan, thanks for having me on. Sean, good to see you. Great you to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Job well here. done.